What's the crack guys, this is Mark here from Retrophonic Media and today I'm going to talk to you about the importance of having variation in your beats. As always, it's quick and simple, so let's get it done. So I'm inside a fruity loop here and I'm working with this sort of trappy, I literally call it trappy and the BPM. I'll just give you a quick sound, or a quick listen rather, to what this sounds like. As you can hear, this is definitely still a work in progress, but there's definitely potential here for this beat. But the main thing I want to talk about is you can see here in the intro, I have kind of the drums going and these two synths that are going at the same time. As we get to the chorus, we have the full drums, we've uh, crashes and cymbals, the 808s going, the snare rolls, the two synths, and there's a pad going as well. So all together, it's quite full. You can hear it again. So I'm not saying that's bad, it'd be pretty good for a hook, but if you had all of that going the entire way throughout the song, it would just get really boring and really annoying very quickly. And as well as that, it'll actually make it very difficult for whatever person is mixing to actually fit a vocal over that. And it's just not a good way to do things. So as you see here, I have this synth, synth one and two, and I have them on the playlist here. And if I get rid of this and actually drag it out, you can see that it's the entire pattern. But what I like to do is if I get this little razor tool here, and I just chop it up into four bits, put incorrectly there. And what I'll do throughout the verses is I'll get rid of every second one. So now there's kind of these gaps that are being left there. And you can see as well, the 808 is filling in a lot of the gaps. So there's still stuff going on and you got the drums. But as well, when it drops out here in the fourth bar, the snare roll is coming in. So it's drawing more attention to that as well without it, you know, fighting for the space. So you can just have a listen again. as opposed to it being like this. It's just too busy. So if we put that back there again, and similarly, so this is the first half of a 16 bar verse, so then when we get to bar nine, which is gonna be the second half of a 16 bar verse, I'm doing this sort of call and response thing between what I'm calling synth one and synth two here. So I'm doing opposite with synth two of what I'm doing with synth one. So if I had this, Drawing out again into four bars. What I'm basically doing is I'm cutting it up with the razor tool again into equal segments. Really bad with this tool today. So we have chopped up like that. And on synth one, I'm leaving them in on one and three. So I'm going to remove them on one and three and synth two and leave them in on two and four. So what that does then is it allows the synths almost to do this call and response thing where it's playing the top one. And when that's playing, the bottom one isn't playing. And then when the bottom one is playing, the top one isn't playing. So that sounds like this. So that's called call and response. It's like synth one is calling and synth two is responding to it. And this is important as well because if you had these two synths playing the whole way throughout the song, then by the time it hits in the chorus, it doesn't have as much impact. It doesn't have as much meaning. And it's just a much better way of doing things. So please make sure to add some variation to your beats, at least in your verses. I hope that's helpful. Thanks very much for watching. If you have any recommendations for any topics you would like to see me cover, please let me know in the comment section below. Also, please make sure to like and subscribe for more. And you can make contact with me at retrophonicmedia.com.